case I leave. I know how I made it. I've made it by grave. Steps that are slower now have taken each one by faith. Standing on Jordan's stormy shore, I'll lift my trembling voice once more. I know how I made it, I've made it by God. God's children are leaving one by one, passing this way and going Signs of the time reveal we don't have very long. But each one who stands up on that shore, waving goodbye as they rejoice. Glory to God, we'll leave here singing that sweet song. I know how I made I've made it by God. Steps that are slower now have taken each one by faith. Standing on Jordan's stormy shore, I'll lift my trembling voice once more. I know how I made it. I've made it by God. Maybe see. Well, we don't have a bulletin. Tell you why I'm preaching, so you can find it now. Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19. I've been reading in the Gospels the uh, last a couple, two or three months and primarily preaching there. There's so many good messages. You could stay there literally for the next 10 years and never preach any other book. Well, I'm not going to do that, but I hope you've been blessed by some of the teachings and miracles of Christ that we found here. And you can never get tired of the work and the teachings of Jesus from the Gospels, that's for sure. But this morning, this story about the rich young man that came and wanted eternal life. I know I've preached on that a number of times, but we preach it every week. That one wouldn't get old. But I trust it'll be a blessing to you today and speak to somebody in a way that we need spoken to. We'll read this morning, beginning Matthew 19, verse 16 and following. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. And he said unto him, Which? Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And the young man said unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? And Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Then saith Jesus unto his disciple, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Then his disciples heard it, and they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus beheld them, 
saith unto them, With man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. And that little last little phrase is our theme this morning. But with God all things are possible. I want to preach on the God of impossibilities. Let's, let's speak on that and try to help you this morning. And anyone that hears the message through the online sources, I trust it will be a blessing and help somebody today. Andrew, come to the mic and lead us in prayer. God, thank you for this sermon that we come here and worship you. And just please help us throughout this entire year until it, it's all over. And then just help us live for you every day and not forget about you and spread your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Jesus said, well, God, all things are possible. And I hate to tell you this, but you'll agree with me that that's certainly true with God. But with mankind, there are some things that's just impossible, isn't it? There's just some things. Now, I don't think, as much as I do enjoy basketball, that would probably be my favorite sport of the three main sports, but I don't think I'll ever play for the NBA. I just can't see that. Can anybody here see me that happening? Oh, thank you, Tommy. I appreciate your confidence. Uh, I'm too short, and I know I know you're going to mention Spud Webb, and, and he was 5'6", too, same height as me. But I think he had a little bit better legs than what I got, okay? Too short. My, my, I can't jump, uh, I'm too slow, uh, it's just not going to happen, it's not going to happen, I, I would say that's an impossibility, so I better just be a good fan, wouldn't y'all say, there would be some things impossible in y'all's life, wouldn't there be, I can't see Kenneth Pruitt ever being president of the United States, I believe that's an impossibility, now, now maybe I just offended him, I don't know, what do you think Kenneth, you going to be a great politician, how about Daryl? <laughs> Boy, we're really getting impossible now, aren't we? <laughs> Vi, oh, he just be vile. Okay, well, maybe that's a possibility. Y'all know what I'm getting at. There's some things you say, well, this is my talent, this is me, and I might can do some things I think I couldn't, but now there's definitely some things just out of reach. And let me say with mankind, here's an impossibility. We are not and cannot live above sin. And no, y'all know that to be true. You can try as hard as you want it. Before you're saved, you're certainly not going to. I want to take that a step further. After you get saved to meet the Lord, you're still not going to live above sin because the devil's not going to leave you alone. There's so much in your nature to do wrong that it's going to creep up on you. Yes, it is an impossibility to do a lot of things in life because of the talents and gifts we have just don't let us. And yes, it is an impossibility to live above sin. However... Jesus here, he did not say with man nothing shall be impossible. He didn't say that, did he? He said with God nothing shall be impossible. And that's the key this morning. I'm preaching this morning about the God of the impossible, the God that has no limits. And I read this story right here. And uh, after this story happened and Peter experienced it and heard the conversation between this young rich man and Jesus, Peter said, and when Jesus mentioned the eye of the needle, Peter said, then it is absolutely impossible that a man can be saved. That's what he said. Because he said that he said it's easier for a rich man to go through the eye of a needle than, excuse me, let's go back and read. Let, I'm, I'm, the camel, not a man. Verse 24, he said unto him, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into heaven. Have you ever tried to, you have if you've ever sewed, have you tried to thread a needle with a thread? I mean, you got to, boy, that hole's little. You got, particularly if you got a little age on and your, and your nearsightedness is beginning to fade, it's just about impossible to get that little thread through there. Now, if you think it's hard to get a thread through there, try to take a big old animal like a camel that stands up about eight foot tall. Try to squeeze him in the out of the needle. And when, and when Peter heard that and the disciples heard it, they said, well, then for, for, for man to be saved, it's just impossible because there's no way anybody could squeeze a, a camel through the eye of a needle. But Jesus said, well, God, all things are possible. Yes, it is true. If God wanted to put a camel through the eye of a needle, he could, he could thread it right through there. Me and you can't, but he could. And yes, it is possible. It, it, it is possible that God could save this young man that come to him. This young man came 
came to him, and I'm going to get to him in just a minute, but he had a situation that humanly speaking on his part seemed to be impossible. He wanted to have eternal life, but with his attitude and his outlook on life, it just wasn't going to happen until God worked a miracle in his life. But let me say this. Let's talk about some things that God can do. Let me say there is no sinner that God can't save. Do y'all believe that? Yes, this man's a sinner, but yes, God could save him. Now, I want to show you in this young man's life the problem that so many have why they don't get saved is because this young man would not admit his sin, you know? And that's the problem. You're not, nobody's going to get saved until they come clean and honest with God about where they stand. Let me say this young man came and he said, I want eternal life. Well, who doesn't want eternal life? I preached last week on don't die the second death. Nobody wants to die the second death, but when you know you've got to give your heart and life to the Lord Jesus Christ, men end up going that way anyway. But nobody would voluntarily and, and want to go to hell, but they don't want Christ enough to go to heaven and have their life changed, you know. But he says here, I want eternal life. And Christ said, then you must keep the commandments. And Jesus named a few of the commandments from the Ten Commandments. And he said, well, then I'm good. I got them all. Every commandment, it's in the book. I've kept them all. I want to tell you two commandments he didn't keep because Jesus said to him, well, if you go keep them all, then go and sell all you have and give to the poor. Now, that was a high order, but Christ was getting to, he was getting to the, to the he was getting to the heart of the matter. This man had a, he, he kept these other Ten Commandments, but he had of God before Almighty God and that was his money. And the commandments in Deuteronomy chapter 6 where it says love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul and might and the commandment in Leviticus 19 where it says love your neighbor as yourself he, he didn't keep those because he was he had something he loved more than God he loved his money and there was no way even if it meant losing heaven he wasn't going to part with one penny of it it's not that he wasn't going to sell all of his money and give to the poor. He wasn't going to give a dime of it to the poor. He did not love the Lord with all of his heart, soul, and might. He did not love his neighbor as himself because everything he had, he was going to keep it and he was going to share nothing, absolutely nothing. But yet, even after realizing he was that greedy and, and that much idolized money, he would not admit he had sinned. He kept saying, I have kept all the commandments. I have kept them all. I'm going to tell you right now, brothers and sisters, as long as a man says, I've kept all the commandments, I'm a perfect man, if he says that, you'll never make heaven because you have to admit your sin, admit your wrong. Nobody should have to convince you that you are a sinner. You ought to be honest enough with what's in your heart to admit that yourself. But there is no sinner that God cannot save if that man would just come honest and clean before God. And yes, this man right here could have been saved had he just been honest and kept, quit saying, I've kept all the commandments and admit he had broken a plenty of them. Do y'all agree with that? And let me say, when we look at the commandments, Jesus' name that he said, Jesus said, don't commit murder. He said, I've never done that one. I ain't killed anybody. But Jesus said, if you hate a man in your heart, in, in your heart, you killed him. I mean, there's sins in reality, then there's sins just in thought. Jesus said, don't commit adultery. He said, I've never done that one. I do not believe this man was any different than any other man. I believe he'd looked at a pretty lady walking by that was not his spouse and said, woo wee, what a nice lady. I believe he'd done that. Because I think every man alive has done that. Let's just be honest about this thing, okay? And Jesus said, if you've done that in your heart, you committed adultery because you looked at a lady that wasn't yours. Amen. And we're going down. He said, honor thy mother and father. I want to tell you, I, 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 I never, boy, I was careful not to back talk my mother and father because it come right back on my hind side when I did. But I'm telling you, I had some, I had some back talking thoughts in my mind sometimes. I just let it get them out. I might have obeyed them outwardly, but inside sometimes I was a bit of rebellion. Son, I want to tell you, there's not one, it's not just a matter of I broke one commandment. I want to tell you, there's not a commandment in the book that we all haven't broke. But there's no sinner that God can't save if the man would just be honest and admit he is a lawbreaker and a sinner and unclean before mighty God. And yes, if this man, even this rich man, that Christ said it would be easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle than for this rich man and other rich people to get saved if he would have just admitted his sin and, 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 and come honest to God. Yes, God could have changed him and God could have taken the place as the one to be worshipped in his life more than his riches and money. 
Do y'all believe that today? There's no sinner God can't save. Yeah, some of y'all that's known me a long time, it was at, at my wedding, and that has been a long time ago, my first wedding. Did y'all, did y'all like that one? Okay. I'm teasing, we ain't having one. But anyway, I'm making, I'm making Rachel mad, I'm teasing. But the, the man that gave us, a, gave, uh, let's see, excuse me, my best man, he was an older fellow, a military veteran, Colonel Chonker, we called him. And uh, there was a reason I let him be my best man. He did introduce me and Rachel. And I've shared that story 10,000 times. I won't share it again. But nevertheless, it's the funny part about that story. This, when I met Colonel Chalker, he was an older man. He was in his 70s and he had just gotten saved. Just gotten saved. And he said that he said that the preacher Moore from Old Swanee Baptist in Buford began to stop in his antique shop in Buford and talk to him. And Old Colonel Chalker loved to share his military stories. And he was one of the few men I ever personally knew that was on the front line in three of our wars. World War II, the, the Korean War, and Vietnam. He, was, he served what, whatever it was, 30, 40 uh, year career and had served and not just in an office somewhere. He fought with his troops in all three wars. And he told me, he said, and he pulled out of his back pocket a New Testament. And he said, this New Testament was given to me in boot camp training in the, in the early 40s when I went into the service and it stayed in my back pocket every day I fought in the war. Every day. He said, and I mean, it was tore all to pieces. He said, it was there every day. And when Preacher Moore, the man that led him to Christ, when he approached him and asked him to come to church, if he knew the Lord, he said, he said oh, I prayed. He said, I didn't ask you if you to pray it. Are you saved? And then he said, he pulled that New Testament out. Look at here. The Lord's with me. The Lord's been in my back pocket through three wars. I didn't ask you if you had a Bible in your back pocket. He said, I'm asking if you're saved. What I'm trying to tell you, he was an honorable man and he feared God. He carried that little New Testament. And he had fought and served America in great ways. There was a thousand good things you could say about Colonel Chalker. Not the least of the fact he put me and Rachel together. Okay, But of all the good things you could say, there was still something missing in his life. You can't get to heaven and say, I said a prayer. I prayed on the battlefield and I was shot at. You can't get to heaven and say, I carried a New Testament in my back pocket. You can get to heaven, there's one thing out. Have you been washed in the blood of the Lamb? Have you received Christ in your heart? Have you, have you quit talking? about the good about you and the good you've done is start talking about the bad about you and accept his plan of salvation to save the lowliest of sinner just like yourself and that's what the colonel was missing at 70 plus years old he got on his knees and invited Christ in his heart and it's proof there's no sinner God can't save and this man right here yes he could have been another one yes that camel could squeeze through the eye of a needle because with God all things are possible and God can save all. Do y'all believe that? Let's go a little bit farther this morning. I want to say, there. let me say this morning, there's no servant God can't use. Amen? If you put yourself a, 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 a saved in God's sight and become a servant to God, God can and God will use you. Do y'all believe that? Amen? No man God can't use. We talked this Wednesday night, we studied in Peter's uh, epistle, his first epistle, about to get into the second one, but we talked about Peter and how different he was from Paul. And old Peter, he toward the end of his life, he traveled into other parts. He ended up in Rome. And so he did some traveling. And Peter was absolutely the most unfit man to travel and evangelize. He might have he might have done fine up there around the Sea of Galilee where he grew up, but but a very poor education compared to Paul. I mean, but God called him to go other places. And by God's help, he did it. Not by book learning that he had, because he had little. Paul had the book learning. And I said Wednesday night, he could have looked at Paul and said, Paul was the one to go to the, to the uttermost, not me. I better stay around home. I can't speak to these people. I can't speak these other languages like Paul. But when Peter went out, and, 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 and when Peter went out, when Peter preached, and when he dictated this book that the Holy Spirit gave him, God used him. And still Wednesday night, 2,000 years later, every single verse and chapter we've read, God has touched our heart and life from a man that could have said, I'm uneducated, I can't be used. But if a man puts himself in God's hand, there's no man that is willing to be a servant that God can't use and God can't bless. Y'all believe that? You should believe that. It's the truth. Amen. 
I remember back when it, 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 uh, a man I knew that he's, I guess he's still there. I don't guess he's retired yet, but his name's Stanley Ewan. Gene Ed, you ever know the missionary Stanley Ewan in Indonesia? Never knew him. Stanley Ewan was from around Buford. I met him. He had just been saved not that long ago at that time. And I'm going back 30-something years ago. He said God called him to Indonesia. And I thought that was absolutely a joke. I mean, because he was, Stanley Ewan was, he was an old Buford guy. He was about as redneck as if you have ever seen. He mispronounced every other word. But I, I, I got no reason to be talking about a man doing that. I've listened to myself on this video. It's embarrassed in some way the way I pronounce stuff. But nevertheless, what I'm trying to say, and I, I, I know those far Asian languages are hard languages. I mean, they're hard languages. They write with all those little symbols like Chinese. And it scares me to death just to look at a page of that stuff. I'd hate to know I had to learn it. But he said God had called him to Indonesia to be a missionary. And I thought the poor guy will never make it. He better stay in Buford and evangelize the missionary I was there. That's what I thought, you know. I want to tell you something, Stanley, you and did go to Indonesia. And all our churches never supported him, but all recounts I've heard, he's been a great missionary. And he's given out the word. And yes, he did learn to speak that hard, hard Indonesian, Asian language. Yes, he did. Why? Because when God calls a man, God's going to give the man that ability which he needs. When God calls a man, he's not going to call him to be fruitless. He's going to bless him and give him fruit. There is no servant that God can't bless if that servant will be a servant and humble himself and put himself willingly in the hands of God. Do y'all believe that? That's right. Let me say God can bless New Hope Baptist right here. You say, Brother Ted, we're not going to get blessed till we get through the pandemic. Well, I hope we get blessed more when, when we get through it. But let me say God's going to, He can bless us right now. I don't want to wait till the pandemic's over to try to do something for the Lord. We're called to do something to the Lord right now. Do y'all believe that? I've been trying to tell you this morning, folks, there's no sinner God can't save. There's no servant God can't bless. I couldn't squeeze the camel through the avenue, but my God can. And he can for you too. Do y'all believe that? Let me say to you this morning, let me say there's no prayer God can't answer. Do y'all believe that? God can answer prayer. We got some big prayers in this church right now. We got some big prayers. And uh, uh, big prayers. I mentioned four this morning on the prayer list. Mr. Aikens and Russell. Those are big prayer. Because those men need God's help in different ways. But need God's help. And I'm not going to quit praying for those two men. And I don't know how God, what God's going to do, but I'm going I'm to pray real hard to God will let Mr. Aiken sit right there again because I love him. And I'm going to see him sitting there. Some one of these days, God's going to take him home. And he says he's ready. One of these days, God's going to take me home, and I'm ready. Amen? But I want to sit right here a little bit longer, don't y'all? I don't want to go on the next load. I want to sit on a church bench somewhere just a little bit longer. And I pray that Mr. Akins and I pray that for Russell. And the strangest thing, we were at visiting at Russell's house. Me and Jeff was one night this week and he had a friend over. And to talk about how God uses that thing, that man got just as humble and listened to the word, just as plain. And he said, he said, when, when Russell gets to come to church again, can, can, I, I want to come with him. Can I come with him? And I said, you sure can. I'm going to be looking for you. You can't just come. I'm expecting you. Well, I'm trying to talk about folks and the worst of things. Sometimes you, you, go to, you go to visit a sick person. You wonder, can they ever come back to church? Maybe God's using that situation to get another lost person in church. You never do know. You don't know. But there's no servant God can't use. There's no prayer. He can't answer. I'm praying for these men. Let me say I'm praying for Suzanne, Linda's daughter. I'm praying for Mary. I want to be cancer free, don't y'all? You say, boy, that cancer is a death sentence. It's not a death sentence when God, God can, he, he, it, to us, it may get rid of cancer. It may seem like sticking a camel through the eye of a needle. Yes, it may seem like that to us because it's bad stuff, but it's no problem to get rid of cancer with God because with God, all things are possible. And there's no prayer for a lost person. There's no prayer for a sick person or nothing else that God can't answer. Y'all believe that this morning? Y'all believe that? You know, I, when we, this, one more thing I'm about to hush up, but let me say, we pray for sick people, we pray for lost people. Let me say I had another prayer request for a long, long time, and, and uh, I so much wanted this building back here to, to say we own it, and the bank's long gone. That's what I wanted. I don't like all the money. don't like that at all. But we did for 
number of years. And I got, when, when the pandemic happened, and Keith said, tell them to mail the offers to my house. I got worried about a number of things, but I got worried about that building, you know. Are people really going mail checks to Keith's house? Because there was two months there we didn't have church. Are we still going to get offerings? I was worried, hey, God had all that in his hands. And it was just almost like the very matter of during this pandemic thing, that's when we paid the last note, paid it off. No, we didn't pay the last note. God paid the last note. Let me say it that way. And it's almost like sometimes God answers that prayer and does His greatest miracle. We are the lowest and we are the weakest. Because He's trying to show us it's not you that paid off that building. It's not you that made that person get well. It's not you that made that sinner change. It's God. If God does things to we're on the mountaintop, we'll just be prideful enough to take credit for it. But we can't take credit for it because God blesses us and answers impossible prayers when we are at our lowest, most incapable points in life. Do y'all believe that? Oh, I'm telling you right now, folks, that Campbell, yes, he can go through that eye of a needle. He better, he has to hold his breath and squeeze tight. But when God pushes him through, he gets through. And yes, this man could be saved if he would but admit his sin. And yes, with all sinners, there's no sinner that can't, God can't save and change. There's no servant that God can't bless if you just be willing to do and go where God calls you to do. And there's no prayer he cannot answer. I don't care what it is. Bring it to the altar today. And trust God. That camel is and can and will go through that eye of the needle when God gives him a push. And that's what God does when he does the impossible. Mark, get a song. I'm done. Somebody need prayer today. There's somebody here never been saved. I said there's no sinner can't be saved. Has there been a time in life when you call on the Lord to ask Him in your heart life to save you, He'll do it. It's not impossible. But you've got to be willing. Why don't you come to the altar today? And let's pray together. that You might accept Christ and be saved. There's somebody today, let me say, there's a prayer request. Oh, that seems like a steep mountain. That seems like an impossibility. Well, to you it is. But you're not God. That camel will go through that small hole. When God pushes it, okay. But he's got to be the one. Come and pray. Some reason this message was needed, I believe God said preach it. Somebody needs it. Maybe me need to come to the altar. You obey God. Let's stand at our feet. Brother Martin, to give us a song. Let's let God have his way. Andrew. Page number 321. Care the soul while may you linger, wandering from the fold of God. Hear you not the invitation, oh prepare to meet thy God. Care the soul, oh heed the warning, for your life will soon be gone. Oh how sad to face the judgment. Unprepared to meet thy God Why so thoughtless are you standing While the fleeting years go by And your life is spent in folly Oh, prepare to meet thy God Care the soul, oh, heed the warning For your life will soon be gone Oh, how sad to face the judgment, unprepared to meet thy God. Hear you not the earnest pleading of your friends that wish you well, and perhaps before tomorrow you'll be called to meet thy God. Hear the soul, oh, heed the warning. For your life will soon be gone Oh, how sad to face the judgment Unprepared
to me, thy God. I trust all minds and hearts clear. If not, the altar stays open after church. Amen. Has anybody got a testimony, prayer need? Anything we've overlooked? Remember, camel can go through that hole. God's just got to give it a push. Amen. And it can go. You can't push it through, but God can. You remember that little simple illustration thought. Amen. It's a beautiful story. I love all these teachings of Jesus. I love them. They come back to you over and over again. You see them different ways and think about them. They apply to different times in your life. Amen. Y'all have a good afternoon. We'll meet again at 6. And one day we will have a choir and choir practice again, won't we, Mark? Yep. One of these days. It's just good to see Isabel playing that, uh, the, the, the flute up there, isn't it? Yeah. It's good to see, good to have a flute again. We're going to have everything back as it was one day. Amen. Maybe a few more months, okay? But God bless you. We'll be patient until then and uh, stick together. I'll ask George Goss to have her dismissal and we'll, we'll go out the door. We'll see one of the six, Brother George.